not uh, not that in, intensive. I think uh, you need to you need also to uh, get into the materials, try to have uh, readings, uh, go through the readings of the material that I provided. Anyway, um, if you look at last week uh, content, uh, we learned about um, instrument types. Uh, we uh, get into the review of it. And also we learn about static characteristic, characteristic instrument. And in this static characteristic, characteristic instrument we um, focus also on the uh, calculation of for example um, zero drift um, sensitivity drift and so on okay I think uh, I will uh, go just um, glance through this um, slide um, to recall back of what we have learned uh, before this Okay, we learn about um, types of instrument, uh, active, passive, null type, deflection type, analog, digital, indicating instrument, as well as uh, smart and non-smart instrument. If you um, get into uh, the details of uh, types of instrument that we discussed last week, you see that uh, some of the example as well as the um, issues uh, related to uh, the uh, the instrument uh, I we discussed on that and um, okay this is the the part which is um, very I think very important for you to um, to know because uh, not only we um, learn about the definition of uh, the uh, static characteristics we also uh, try to uh, do some calculation uh, on this matter. So here um, we learn about accuracy, inaccuracy, uh, the definition of it, and also how do we uh, calculate um, the, uh, for example, max measurement error uh, expected of the uh, for the instrument based on the. Um, uh, tolerance of um, the equipment or the the, the, the device itself. Uh, we also uh, look at the precision, repeatability, reproducibility, and we discuss about the difference between uh, precision uh, as well as accuracy. If you look at this uh, diagram, we uh, can uh, conclude that robot number three have a high accuracy due to the if you look at the measurement or the dot uh, dotted uh, dots uh, for robot number three all uh, in the uh, middle circle and uh, all close to each other means that if if we consider this is a measurement so the the measurement itself has um, high uh, precision precise and also uh, high accuracy and we uh, also discuss about tolerance, which is uh, closely related to um, the accuracy that we uh, see before this. And we try to calculate the minimum uh, and maximum value. Uh, for example, uh, this is um, uh, regarding uh, value of resistor. So uh, value of resistor, uh, if you look at, at, at the back of um, the uh, color line of your resistor, you have a line, uh, last um, band, uh, the last color band is the uh, meaning, I mean, the last color band is uh, describing about the tolerance of the resistance. So, um, um, in this case, we have a tolerance of 5%. So, from that uh, value, uh, tolerance value, we can um, describe uh, about minimum and also maximum uh, value of the resistor uh, that we expect. All right, uh, we also uh, look at uh, range uh, or span. I think this is uh, quite straightforward. Uh, minimum and maximum value of the our scale. And uh, linearity, non-linearity. Uh, linear means uh, we do have a straight line in our measurement or best fit of our measurement. 
non-linearity means that uh, the match uh, the 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 characteristic of our measurement itself sometimes um, fluctuated uh, with respect to uh, numbers of measurement that we um, uh, try to measure. I mean, try to uh, to read. Uh, okay, this is very important uh, about sensitivity of um, your measurement. Here, um, as I mentioned uh, in last class, the sensitivity is always related to the slope of the straight line. So if you have a measurement like this, um, uh, at, at your right hand side, we, we have a straight line over there. The slope of the straight line is considered the sensi sensitivity of our measurement. So um, if you try to cal calculate it, um, the, the, the sensi sensitivity value, so you need to have the scale deflection divided by the measure of uh, value of measure and producing the deflection. In other words, uh, I would like to say here is that the difference between uh, the, our this measurement and also this measurement and also how um, the how do we produce the deflection over here is measure uh, is the value of this uh, measured quantity uh, at this point, uh, the x uh, axis of uh, value of x axis over here, minus with the value of um, x axis uh, at uh, this point or at this point. In other words, I would like to say, if you know how to find slope, means that that's the value of your sensitivity. All right, um, we also do some calculation of um, uh, sensitivity. Sensitivity. <coughs> okay, threshold, um, um, it's uh, more or less um, can be defined as a limit uh, of our measurement, or sometimes not a limit. Sometimes, uh, if you look at this example, it says that. Uh, the minimum level of uh, the input before uh, it can change to uh, before we can see any changes. So if you look at um, the example that I provide here, uh, it says here we have a car speedometer typically has a threshold of uh, 15 km per hour. Uh, that means, uh, this means that if the vehicle starts from rest and accelerates, no output reading is observed on the speedometer until the speed reaches 15 km per hour. So the threshold over here is 15 km per hour. And uh, before that threshold, um, we cannot see any changes in terms of um, our vehicle speed, although we know that um, speed uh, we we do have uh, the, the the vehicle has uh, in uh, motion status but um, the speedometer cannot um, uh, capture the value of what is the speed at the uh, at, at that moment maybe it's one kilometer per hour maybe it's five kilometer per hour you cannot capture that that value so, uh, but I think nowadays um, um, since um, the technology also being advancing, uh, we, we don't have this kind of problem um, nowadays. Uh, but during those days, um, when we do have an analog meter, it's, it's not that accurate actually, the, the analog um, speedometer. Okay. So it, it do have a threshold uh, at, until a certain point, uh, then uh, the, the, the speedometer can uh, capture what is the speed of the vehicle at that moment. All right, uh, we also um, describe about uh, drift. We have zero drift um, and sensitive, sensitivity drift. And the drift is mainly due to the ambient temperature. I mean, the the uh, surrounding the em environment of um, your uh, measurement. And if looking at the zero drift, I think uh, it's better explained by this 
uh, diagram. If you look at um, graph at your left hand side, uh, this is what we call as zero drift, where we have bias. And if you look at, at the pattern of the nominal characteristic and the zero drift characteristic, it do have um, it do um, have a, a same sensitivity uh, value. In in other words, the slope over here it's the same. It, it do have a same slope. So, but it shifted to um, other value. I mean, the, the the line itself shifted, not uh, passing through the origin. So this is what we call as um, zero drift. So in other words, um, sometimes people say this also can be described as a bias. Um, on the other hand, uh, the sensitivity drift is um, the slope itself of nominal characteristic. And if you compare with uh, sensitivity drift characteristic, the slope uh, is changing. But the line will uh, passing through the origin point. So here uh, at your right hand side, um, graph B, we have a sensitivity um, uh, drift uh, phenomena. So the, the main point in, in this um, uh, phenomena is that we do have different slope of um, our uh, compared to nominal characteristic behavior. So nominal character, characteristic, characteristic behavior, uh, let's say have uh, uh, one value of slope. And if you observe that um, your measurement or your, uh, uh, your reading, um, several readings yeah, uh, to, to make uh, the straight line and and if you observe that the straight line of your measurement over here it's a bit differ with what stated in the uh, uh, data sheet or in the nominal characteristic means that you have a sensitivity uh, drift in your measurement and if you combine those two um, looking at uh, figure number c um, our uh, measurement reading, uh, we uh, we have a bias over there, and also the slope of um, the compared with nominal characteristic uh, slope is a bit different. So, if you look at uh, graph C, basically we combine those um, zero drift and also sensitive drift characteristic. Uh, there exists a drift uh, in terms of zero and also uh, in terms of sensitivity drift in our measurement. All right, uh, that is very important uh, uh, if you look at this diagram. Although the, the diagram is very simple, but uh, uh, it can explain us um, um, the idea of um, zero drift as well as the sensitivity, sensitivity drift based on the the straight line we can um, simply tell whether this is uh, due to uh, what kind of disturbance, whether it's zero drift or whether it's sensitive, sensitivity drift. And um, on um, on the topic later on the topic, we also um, do some calculation on uh, how do we calculate um, zero drift as well as zero drift coefficient. Uh, the main point here uh, is um, how do we calculate uh, zero drift coefficient? So zero drift coefficient or sensitive drift coefficient, we need to include um, a temperature or uh, um, the influence of temperature in our calculation. Uh, if you, uh, I, I think I mentioned about uh, if you don't know how um, how to calculate uh, the coefficient, have a look at the units of the coefficient. If you look at the units of the coefficient, it's per Celsius. Means that it was uh, your calculation will will respect to the temperature. So.
So you need to um, pay attention on that one. For zero drift, uh, sensitivity drift, uh, sensitivity drift, may maybe uh, it's uh, just by taking the difference between two readings, maybe uh, between two values. And uh, for uh, if you talk about coefficient, uh, you sh you need to include the temperature um, uh, influence as well in your calculation. We uh, discussed two, I think two. Uh, example over here, uh, maybe you can have a look back. And also, I describe also about hysteresis effect and uh, what does it mean by hysteresis effect. And also, uh, I um, give you guys a homework on hysteresis effect as well. Uh, actually, my intention is uh, to uh, to make you guys read about uh, hysteresis definition and uh, the working i mean the 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 working principle of uh, hysteresis in general and also have a look at the videos that i provided in e-learning i don't know <coughs> sorry for that i don't know whether you um, have a look at the videos or not but uh, based on um, the question in my homework i, I do um, I you about hysteresis effect. Hopefully, you get um, an idea about hysteresis, right? uh, hysteresis effect as well. And we also uh, have a look at the example of hysteresis effect. Uh, where did this hysteresis, hysteresis effect typically um, exist? Normally, it, it exists in um, transformer um, uh, with, where we involve if we involve with ferromagnetic material as well as the current uh, developing the magnetic field uh, as well as if you look at uh, uh, if your instrument consists of a spring where um, for example here we have friction force uh, in different direction um, due to um, force acting at the spring And we uh, related to um, the hysteresis phenomenon. Uh, this uh, dead space uh, is also introduced. So you, you know that the dead space is basically the 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 area, uh, the null area over here, the area where we don't have any um, output reading or measurement. So in hysteresis is located over here, okay, between this uh, area, and uh, this is uh, normally happen in uh, motor uh, uh, or gear sets uh, or gear system, and it is known as a backlash uh, phenomenon. So that is uh, the uh, what does mean by dead space, and at the end, um, I have exercise. Basically, this exercise I uh, put it also in your uh, homework. And if you look at the exercise, uh, this is sort of question uh, that you will encounter in your assessment. So it's not that difficult, but um, you need to understand on uh, what are the quantities that you need to uh, that you want to calculate over here. What does it mean by uh, how to calculate uh, zero drift, how to calculate sensitivity, sensitivity drift, uh, and so on. In terms of the, the, I mean, you don't have any um, high level of mathematics involved over here. You don't have any uh, circuit simplification so over here. It's considered easy, but it's not that easy unless you um, really understand on uh, the definition of each um, uh, each uh, us uh, quantities or each us parameters. All right, that's uh, what happened last week. Okay, hopefully uh, everyone um, have no problem in terms of um, the calculation and describing the question, uh, solving the question that I provided in e-learning. Okay, this week 
right? As I told you just now, we have seven slides over here. Seven slides minus these two slides. We only have about five slides. So that's why I bring you guys into uh, last week uh, material to get some um, uh, refresh uh, back what we have learned uh, before this. And this week, okay, we try to have a look at another um, characteristic which is known as dynamic characteristic. And last week, uh, we look at uh, only static characteristic, but uh, static and dynamic characteristic uh, in, in in real or in practical um, world, uh, or if you conduct, uh, if you try to develop a project, or if you uh, come across with a development of uh, any um, prototype, uh, for example, uh, you will come across with these two uh, performance characteristics, both static and also dynamic characteristic. So not only uh, on the static, because you, you learn a lot on the static characteristic uh, in terms of zero sensitivity, in terms of, uh, sorry, zero drift, sensitivity drift, tolerance, and so on. But um, in real world, you might find that both static and dynamic characteristics characteristic it's blend together okay and here we try to identify what does it mean by dynamic characteristic okay uh, we have uh, basically more than this uh, for dynamic characteristic we have zero order instrument first order second order we have third order fifth order uh, fourth order fifth order and so on but we limit our scope of discussion into uh, this three uh, orders of instrument. What does it mean by zero order, first order, and also second order? Okay, let's say um, here it says, the dynamic characteristic of measuring instrument describes its behavior between time measured, time a measured quantity changes value and the time when the instrument output attains a steady value in its response. So in other words, the dynamic characteristic only appears during the transient um, stages or transient period. Do you know what does it mean by transient? Do you have any idea what happened in transient? No. Who answered that one? Do you know what does it mean by transient? No. And I would like to know who said no just now. No. No. And who are you? <laughs> who is that? Hadith. Hadith. Ah, Hadith. Okay, Hadith. Actually, we learned about this transient uh, definition um, last semester. We learned in uh, fundamental of uh, electrical circuit. If you remember about uh, first order, second order circuit, where we do have like um, a, an exponential increment in our voltage, current, with respect to time. So the period of the increment, we can say that one is a transient, um, transient period or transient time so let's say here i don't have the pen moment anyway maybe later on we have a look at the graph and i try to explain um, what i mean by transient later on uh, based on the uh, graph that i provided in um, next uh, few slides Okay, um, if you talk about transient, um, it closely related to a measurement uh, that we try to uh, capture 
and we try to capture it with respect to time. So closely related to a time uh, variable. Okay. Why my pen is not here? Okay, let's see last time in um, uh, FO fundamental FOEC, okay, SMJE 1023 subject, fundamentals of electrical circuit. So we do um, learn about first order and second order. Um, components, uh, I mean second order circuits. So if you have a response like this, okay, is considered as a first order. And if you have a response like this, you have a second order uh, response. And normally for first order, uh, last time we learned about uh, circuits was involved with only one um, passive element uh, of either capacitor or inductor. And if we uh, uh, considering a second order circuit means that we do have uh, two, maybe two inductors or maybe a combination of inductor and capacitor. So the, the point that I would like to highlight here is what does it mean by transient? Transient means that the the loading time over here okay, over here is the transient okay from zero to a certain level over here we can observe that there is a building uh, in terms of voltage value or maybe this is voltage value. Maybe you can consider um, your measurement. Maybe uh, that is ang maybe angle, maybe um, uh, displacement, and some so on. So this is where we uh, the the value of our measurement increase up until its steady state value. So the steady state is considered as the value that have been saturated. So that uh, is another point, uh, steady state. And the point that I would like to highlight here is the transient is um, at from zero until time over here. So this is considered, maybe I put it as T1. Uh, this is considered a transient time where the signal try to develop uh, towards its um, final value okay if you uh, look at uh, your your measurement basically uh, i only um, in this uh, in this uh, example that i show you i only focus on two types of um, measurement orders uh, the first is uh, the, the red line is first order the second one is the second order um, uh, characteristic but basically, here it says that in any linear time variant measuring system, the following relation can be written between input and output for time greater than zero. It could be up until nth order. So nth order, maybe uh, tenth order, maybe eighth order. So, but we need to limit the measurement uh, until it's uh, it's suitable um, order value that we try to capture. So here, if we limit the consideration to uh, that of step change in the measurement quantity only, then uh, if we limit the consideration to that of step changes 
in the measured quantity only, then the equation 2.1 is reduced to this equation. It means that we, uh, we limit the consideration with respect to measured quantity only. The measured quantity means that this is our measured quantity, okay? But if we, if you look at over here, we have input and also output. Let's say this is output and this is our input. So the, this is our measured quantity. Oh, my handwriting. Measured quantity. So if we limit this uh, part or the, the measured quantity part only, we will end up, we can also reduce this um, uh, equation into this kind of um, equation. Means that this is our input and we neglect all this order of our input. We only try to observe our output and we let our output up until nth order. So that is what happened. Uh, uh, the, the, the reduction, um, the equation reduction can be uh, done if we try to consider only the input of our signal, uh, the, sorry, the output of our uh, measured signal. Right, uh, and of course, uh, we um, always do that because um, we try to measure a, a, a static, uh, I mean, a single value. For example, let's say um, I have a multimeter, okay, I have terminal of uh, positive and negative, and I know that my um, what I try to measure here is I try to measure um, maybe a voltage level at um, at some terminal, and I know that the voltage level level is um, is a single value. For example, um, two volts or five volts. Let's say five volts, and I try to measure that five volt. And my input over here is considered as a, a zero order input or a single action input so that's why i can neglect all these or uh, the other uh, orders of my inputs only considering a single uh, or um, a single action input or single order input over here a zero order input over here however if i look at my output the output can be anything maybe the output can be um, the f I cannot I, I can cannot say that uh, the the output can be uh, um, for example if if I um, consider analog multimeter and I can see that the the deflection of my my needle over there um, of my multimeter uh, from zero to uh, a certain level. So the, the deflection, the, the movement of the deflection is considered as a transient uh, part uh, or transient period of my measurement, of our, my output measurement. And it stays at one level, for example, five volts. So that is my static, uh, or sorry, that is my um, steady state value or my uh, saturated value of my output. So here, if you look at the movement of the needle from zero to five volt, we do have a transient movement, uh, I mean, transient period of our needle movement. And the output is developed from zero, one, two, three, and it, normally we will find that the, the measurement is a, um, a first order uh, in, in terms of first order behavior, for example, rise up till one level and it stop over there. And sometimes you might find your needle movement like this. It's developed and 
it overshoot a bit and try to get back to its uh, original uh, position. So that is another type of characteristic which is known as a second order characteristic. So the first one that I show you is that if you have a look at your needle deflection, move from zero up until five volt and stop over there, that is considered as um, first order uh, characteristic. If you look at your needle uh, deflection, going from zero to five and have a, a bit overshoot and later on try to set, settle at five volts, that is considered uh, um, second order characteristic. And if you look at, um, it's, it's never gonna, you never gonna get something uh, um, which is, okay, at the moment you touch that terminal, it will give you five volts. You're never gonna get that one. You will always find that there is a, a, a transient period for the voltage or for whatever measurement that you try to take um, in order for it to get into its um, steady state value. So the transient time over there is good. Uh, I mean, the characteristic of your needle deflection or um, um, the behavior of your reading over there can be categorized either uh, it is a first order or a second order uh, characteristic. So that is what uh, we tried, uh, I tried to explain in um, this week lesson. So looking at a zero order instrument, normally you never get this type of um, uh, behavior. Lah. If you consider uh, your multimeter, you're never going to get this one. This is very ideal. If you put something at uh, um, the terminal, you try to measure something at the terminal, it suddenly it will give you um, uh, a reading, uh, exact read, or steady state reading. You're never going to get that one, uh, basically, in practical. Uh, it says here for zero order, uh, coefficient A1 and other than A0 is assumed zero, meaning that other component um, this in this equation here here and over here is considered zero we only consider this and also this as our input and uh, output and input okay so remember that this is a very ideal condition for zero order instrument and of course we would like our instrument to to be uh to behave uh, like a zero order instrument because we always need um, our reading uh, instantaneously and um, normally what we find in our uh, instrument we always find this kind of um, characteristic in our measurement we have a lag time or um, as i mentioned earlier uh, the transient time uh, from zero to its measured quantity or for uh, from zero to its um, uh, the measured value so, or for the, its um, steady state value or its saturated value so that's uh, what we always find in our uh, practical and also we um, might find that if our instrument is not properly calibrated uh, okay sometimes we will come across with this kind of um, uh, reading characteristic this is known as a second order uh, characteristic and the second order characteristic always depends on uh, the parameters known as damping ratio factor or zeta uh, it says here that um, the shape of the step response obtained depends on the value of damping ratio parameter or zeta here. If an instrument were, ab were able to were to be only subjected to step input, then the design strategy would be to aim towards a critical damp critical damping ratio. Okay, I would like to ask you guys. 
from A up until E, A, B, C, D, E, which one is the critical damp condition? Can anybody tell me? Which one is the critical damp condition? Can anyone respond? B. Okay. E. I, e. A. A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> C. I need five answers. Haji also say A. One more. B, D, <laughs> okay, D, okay, all right, Nashita and Firdaus, you are right, the critical dam characteristics can be illustrated by uh, the graph presented, uh, uh, the, C, the, C, uh, the C line where uh, for uh, C, the value of your damping ratio or your damping parameter over here, damping factor is 0 0.707. This is an ideal value of um, damping ratio that we want in, in the second order instrument as well as second order characteristic. Why? Because if you look here, it compromises between overshoot as well as settling time. If you look at um, A, of, of course, out lah, because you never gonna get your uh, value of your measured quantities. For example, your measured quantities here is, let's say you try to measure 10 volt over here. If you consider A graph, you're never going to get um, 10 volt in your measurement. It's always fluctuating between zero and uh, its um, highest value. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe 20 volts, maybe. Okay, but if you consider C, you see here it can compromise between response time and also uh, the overshoots of uh, uh, the overshoot of your uh, measurement. Okay, let's say we, we consider the worst case. Let's say uh, here someone says about A. A is definitely uh, undesirable. And if you consider E also, it's not good basically. Because you see here, for one measurement, okay, you need longer time until you get into 10 volt reading. So this problem, the first one, due to overshoot not overshoot lah okay fluctuation due to fluctuate this one due to very slow slow response and if you consider this b eh, b where your zeta is 0 .0, 0 0.2. You can see you, there's still overshoot over here. Significant overshoot. Where is the significant overshoot all about? Over here. So you see that in order for you to get into 10 volt reading, you need to get into the first overshoot, uh, second over here, the third over here, and up until, okay, at this point, then you can get your 10 volts, steady state reading. And for D, this one, the, the, the just over um, E response, uh, the problem is also the same. Uh, it's slow, but uh, better compared to E. And the best one is, here, C. You see, we have 
quicker time or fast time to get into 10 volts and with um, small overshoot values and later on settle um, faster compared to uh, D and E. So this is what we are uh, we desired in our um, second order instrument or uh, measurement with respect to second order characteristic. And of course, uh, in uh, in practical, it's uh, difficult to specifically get the damping ratio of 0 0.707. And we try to, uh, if we um, look at the data spec or uh, the data sheet of our instrument, we try to limit our uh, damping ratio selection uh, within this range 0 0.6 up until 0 0.8 so that uh, okay lah, it, it's not that bad uh, but uh, it's not that good as well so it uh, satisfies both uh, uh, the needs of um, less overshoot as well as uh, fast response okay and if you want to know details about these um, three uh, first order, second order, and also zero order instrument, you can uh, have a look at the notes that I provided in in e-learning. Okay, and I think um, that's all for today. And as I promised you guys, uh, this is a very short. Um, I mean very um, the, the the content of today's lecture is not that much compared to what you have seen last week but uh, if you want to know um, more you should uh, have a look at um, 